My name is Michael McAlpine. I'm assistant professor of mechanical engineering at Princeton University, and I work on uh, nanotechnology for energy harvesting and for sensing. We're trying to solve problems that involve medically implanted devices, which currently run off of batteries, but the battery dies every five to 10 years, so you need another surgery to replace the battery. What we'd like to do is be able to en harvest energy from lung motion, harvest that mechanical energy into powering the device inside your body to lengthen the lifespan of the battery or even replace the battery altogether. PZT is lead zirconate titanate. It's one of the most efficient and widely used piezoelectric materials. Uh, piezoelectric actually comes from Greek uh, piezo, which means to uh, bend or flex or stress something uh, to squeeze, actually. And so piezoelectric is the pr production of power by squeezing a material, by stressing it, flexing it, uh, or bending it. So PZT is a very hard and brittle material. It's not something that you would normally think of as being implanted against your lungs. What we're trying to do is make it stretchable, flexible, and biocompatible so that it can be e easily integrated against your lungs, but then take advantage of the fact that it's extremely efficient piezoelectric material to harvest as much power as possible. We make ribbons using standard microfabrication processes. Uh, but the point, is, the, the key thing is that the ribbons are nanometer scale thick, so that allows them to flex and stretch in ways that bulk materials would not be able to do. You can think of it as an analog to optical fibers, which are made out of glass, but because they're so thin and long, they can uh, be flexed and stretched very easily. What we did is we actually buckled our ribbons in order to make them stretchable, but when you buckle them, this buckling process induces a very high strain gradient in these PZT nanoribbons because they're nanometer scale thick, so they can buckle in extreme ways that bulk materials will not be able to. So that buckling process actually uh, leads to a higher electrical polarization at those buckles, and that's something called the flexoelectric effect, which basically is a combination of flexing with electrical output. It's not related to the piezoelectric effect, but can be thought of as an addition to that. And in fact, even non-piezoelectric materials exhibit this flexoelectric effect. So right now, the power generation is kind of on the uh, lower end of things. It's on the microwatt to milliwatt scale. But that's actually enough, because uh, portable electronic devices and implantable biomedical devices, they're coming down in power requirements. So they're also on the microwatt to milliwatt scale. So we're hoping that these will have a meeting of the minds here as our stuff gets better and those come down in power requirements that we will actually be able to power biomedical devices from lung power. So I think it's an extremely exciting time for uh, power generation of biomedical devices with piezoelectric materials. First of all, because we're getting better at going from the basic science to the engineering to manufacturing of flexible and stretchable piezoelectric devices. And also, there's a, whole bunch, there's a whole range of new sensing and biomedical devices out there which are also directly implemented on flexible and stretchable substrates. So you may be able to reach a point where you can build a platform on a single platform. You can have these components of uh, energy harvesting, sensing, uh, and other biomedical applications all on a single flexible and stretchable platform which can then be very easily integrated into your body.